the only guy we're missing is John. Okay. All right. Uh, I am going to uh, call this meeting to order. The uh, meeting of the East Hampton Historical Commission, uh, June 9th, 2021. Uh, it's called to order. Uh, first uh, order of business, public speak. Chuck's on the agenda, so we don't have to worry about him. Approval of the 5-12-21 minutes. Everybody got I, I move. I move to approve the minutes. Okay. Uh, I I second that motion. Okay. And uh, in favor, Beverly. Aye. Nora. Aye. I wrote them. I'll vote yes too. Okay. Uh, item number four: Williston Northampton School renovation projects historical review. Uh, we have uh, Chuck McCullough here today and Jeff Cannon, and I'm not sure who Becca is. Is that uh, one of your people? Uh, no, nothing I know of. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got all the uh, materials. Uh, would you like to, uh, Chuck, give us a uh, an overview of what's going on here? Yep. Yeah. Um, we are we're, we are using a bond issue of four million dollars to address very candidly projects that just are going to be very hard to raise money for. Um, certainly, uh, whether we like it or not, our, our donors are more interested in uh, offering contributions to uh, fun more fun things than boilers and and you know replacing you know, equipment and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, as well as, you know, just some renovations to residences. So we, we, you know, there's a, there's a couple of projects that could potentially have been fundraising activities, but they're, they're just, there's just not enough interest on the part of donors for these. So, but these are projects that have to be addressed, um, just from a deferred maintenance standpoint. So uh, that's the purpose of the, the bond issue. Um, the list of the projects, you know, probably what I'll do is, Mike, do I have the ability to share my screen? I uh, should be able to. Uh, it says host, host yeah. disabled. I'll, yeah. I'll make you a co-host. Oh, so you great. should be able to. And, um, so as soon as that takes effect. Great. Let me just try that again. Yep, there it is. What I'll do is um, let me um, let me just call up a map, and that that would probably be the easiest way. Because this would be part of what we distributed, uh, but it would probably be a, a good touchstone to talk about um, the work that we're doing, so that you can get a handle on uh, that. So let me go back to. We're not actually seeing if you're sharing. Yeah, no, I'm putting it up right now. Okay. Let me see if I can, uh, there it is, your screen. There. Okay, so you see it now? Yep. Great. It's okay. up, yeah. Yep, so let me just move that over there. Uh, so just very quickly, the, the projects that are going to be done are, uh, the tennis courts are just really being just torn up and then rebuilt. Um, it's about 15 years since, 15, 16 years since we did the tennis courts. And like any flat surface um, with asphalt, it starts to crack and starts to become difficult to maintain. Uh, there's also some drainage issues out there uh, that uh, we're going to make sure are addressed under the new dorm. But that, that's the reason for the expenditure there. Uh, Philip Stevens Chapel um, and John Wright Dormitory, the Kane Athletic Center. Uh, let's talk about the Athletic Center first. Again, that's just a parking lot outside. That's not going to be anything that really would be of concern to the Historical Commission. Uh, with, John, with John Wright Dormitory, um, the uh, it's just a, a, a mechanical system. Uh, the uh, and then uh, Ford Hall, again, a, another older building, but everything is going to be done inside. It's just a mechanical system. It's a heating and air con a heating system that needs to be replaced. And, uh, and then in Scott Hall, 
uh, the interior work that's going to be done is just the renovation and improvements to science labs. So all that is just work that's being done inside. Uh, the things that I think would be uh, the, would probably be a more uh, attend and, and again again okay, Philip Stevens Chapel. Um, the uh, we are doing the mechanical systems there too. Uh, we are also replacing some windows, but um, that's uh, that it's really going to be the the major process here is to get the mechanical system, the heating system replaced. The two projects that have a lot of, ex you know, I won't say a lot of exterior work, but exterior work that would be important for the historical commission to be aware of is the head of school's house. And that's really just a, a ramp that we need to have for ac uh, handicap accessibility to the building, uh, to the home. Uh, we do a lot of entertaining in the head's house and it has to be accessible and it just hasn't been. So, um, with the improvements that we're going to do to the house, which are going to be mostly interior, uh, there the one exterior uh, effort that we're going to be doing. There will be the um, the handicap accessibility ramp. Um, there are going to be windows changed in the head of school's house too, but they are not going to be any design changes whatsoever to what's existing there. It's just literally going to be taking the units out and putting new units in. They're going to be uh, a high-end uh, restoration uh, quality uh, vinyl uh, replacement window, but all the uh, you know all the grid patterns in the windows are all going to be the same. If you look at the window, you, you, you would not even know that it has been changed out. We'll know it because it'll be more operational and will conserve and will be better from an energy standpoint. Uh, and the same thing holds true with Memorial Dormitory. There's a front end bridge uh, to the building, which is comes in from the quad, which is the main entrance to the, the dormitory. And uh, that is uh, structurally having some problems right now. So we have to remove that bridge and then reconstruct a bridge and entrance to that building. We're doing that. Uh, we'd like to do that this summer. And uh, also in Memorial Dormitory, uh, windows are going to be replaced. Again, same thing, uh, renovation, high quality windows. They are going to be vinyl and sealed, double pane windows. No change in what they look like. It's literally going to be the same window, just upgraded and improved so that the building is tighter uh, from an energy conservation standpoint. Uh, that's the overview. I think we've also sent some details uh, regarding uh, particularly the head of school's house and memorial. And uh, we certainly can touch on those if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess the, probably the most important uh, would be the head of schools uh, because it's, a, it's obviously an older building and uh, probably has the most exterior changes, right, with the ramp. Whoever looking at it here doesn't look like uh, it would be much of a difference anyway. Right? Yeah. Did I did my screen switch so that you see the picture of the head of school's house? Great. Yes. Yes, yes it did. Yep. So this is the house. Uh, it's on 37 Park, right across the street from the quad. Uh, the head of school uh, of Williston lives there with his family. And uh, this is the write-up that we've provided to uh, Mass Historical as well as you folks. And um, this is the exterior shot of what the house looks like now, particularly on this side right here. And as you can see here, this is the ramp that is going to be put in place. Uh, with a door entrance here. So this, where this was just windows before, there will be a door here and a ramp. But, you know, again, from an entertaining standpoint, um, with the number of people that come to this house, um, making it accessible is important. Honestly, we had a uh, an important person, an important alum of the school come to the school who was wheelchair bound a few years ago. And for the event, we literally had to build a ramp so that the person could get into the house and meet with the head of school. So it was a, a major undertaking, but uh, was important enough person that we did that. But really moving forward, this is going to be an important part of uh, this home and how it how we use it as an institution. Okay. And uh, 
You also had some pictures of Memorial Hall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, did my uh, the screen switch to the picture? Great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. This is Memorial, and uh, this bridge that I have my current is, is it? Let me make this a little larger. Uh, that helpful. So this bridge that enters in here, there's two dorms here. This is Memorial East. This is Memorial West. And this bridge right here and is leads to a door to one dorm and a door to the other dorm. This bridge right here is degrading. There's water getting into it. It's all masonry. And it just, you know, there, it has a, it has a, a a shelf life and the rebar within it is starting to rust. And um, so since it's the entrance to the building, it's really starting to become harder and harder to maintain. And we don't want it to get to the point where it's going to be a safety issue. So what we've done is we've ended up to saying, we're going to remove this bridge completely. And let me see if I can move this down here. Uh, let me make this smaller. There we go. And then this is the bridge that is going to be replaced. Uh, what I just I just po just show uh, was just showing you in the picture. And uh, we're also going to put a brick apron out front. We did this in front of Ford Hall last year, actually, and it's so it's going to match a lot of the work that we've done in Ford Hall, the entrance to the dormitory. And then uh, in uh, the sidewalk work will all have to be, you know, leveled out to make sure because we are going to change the grade modestly because this ramp is a bit too steep right now. So we're going to bring the grade up a little bit so it's not as steep and it's just frankly safer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we want to go from here. This is what the bridge, this is an, an image of the bridge. So before the picture, I'll go back to the picture in a second, which was all masonry all here. This is now going to be steel with some masonry pillars. And there'll be some lights inside these masonry pillars to be able to light up the walkway. And there'll be light underneath the bridge too, in order to be able to just make sure that, you know, anyone walking underneath, this is our technology center. We wanna make sure that particularly at night that this area is safe. So, but that that is the change. There's literally we'll be taking this out and laying this in doing some regrading and some improvements to this area here based on the new structure we're dealing with, and then a brick apron in this area here. Okay. And to give you a, just going back to the picture in a second so you can get an idea what the change is. Uh, let me move back to your side. Let me see if I can make that even a little larger. Yeah. This brick, all this that's brick will now be uh, just pillars with some steel, uh, you know, posts, you know, or, or railings in between. So it'll be, it'll be a little more open, which we think will probably make it look a little cleaner, a little nicer. And, uh, and the ramp will not be as, as abrupt. Uh, so some of this grade will be brought up a little bit to make this just a little safer coming out. Yeah, and just a note historically on this, uh, th this whole entrance was added to the building in 1996 or 97. Um, uh, originally, actually, it was just flush grade up to the building in a big blank face. Um, and then at one point, the uh, area was dug out to allow access uh, from the outside to the basement. And then uh, this addition was put onto the building in, so I said 1996, I believe when we finished the campus center, we went right over and, and did this work. So, um, so historically, this is not actually even original to the building, but. Yeah, and this, you're talking with the addition, Jeff, was this, this peak here, correct, as well as the peak right. on the roof and these two entrances here, as well as the bridge and that, and that uh, lower area that I just showed in the last picture. Yeah, but the, yeah, the peak on the roof was not original to the building either, but that right. was added, uh, uh, that was added uh, a, a while before that. Uh, the the ninety six renovation um, brought the new center entrance in. Um, 
I don't know if that has any impact in terms of, you know, the, the, the building itself is certainly uh, um, goes back to, I think, 1950 uh, something, but the uh, uh, that part of it was, was added. In fact, the whole wing on the east side was added uh, later on as well. Right. Uh, what are the window materials now on that building? This right here? Yeah. The window materials? Yeah. Uh, they're all, uh, uh, I think, uh, aluminum windows, I believe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Original windows were steel sash, uh, single glazed um, nightmare windows to take care of uh, and incredibly energy inefficient. Uh, they were upgraded uh, to the aluminum windows. Uh, actually, probably in '96, uh, and most of the uh, thermopane glass is failing in them now, so uh, they're in need of uh, upgrading again. So the, the visual impact is basically going to stay the same. They're going to, they're going to look at pretty much identical. Yep, and there's no change whatsoever, really, in terms of look. Uh, again, similar to. Uh, any changes we're making on any windows, you wouldn't even know the difference other, you know, looking at it from the else, you wouldn't even know that we made a change, uh, except the people who are going to be operating the windows will know that they actually work now, yeah, yeah. which is a nice feature. Yeah, we'd, like, we'd like to have windows that can actually work. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that might be uh, practical. Yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, now sometimes they close when they shouldn't. Uh, uh, even if somebody has their hand in there, and that's it's really actually been a safety issue. Yeah. Okay. So, the, uh, and on in fact, to the head of the school's house, there the, the door will be put in where the windows are, or kind of part of the windows. Yeah. But I think what they'll do in that instance, I think Jeff has been working with the architects is we don't want to we don't want to make a change. We don't want to just put a, you know, just a screen door there. I mean, we want to have something that's going to match the look and feel of the window. So right. it will be there will be a lot of attention paid to that detail as well. Because it's you know, it's it's, it's a prominent property on our our campus and we want to make sure it's uh, presenting well because uh, we do bring uh, parents over there. We do bring alumni over there. We bring board of trustees over there and uh, it's pretty important that it's, it's presenting well. Yeah. yeah and right now the, the planting space between the building and the driveway uh, is around eight feet wide. So uh, putting the ramp against the building still leaves us with some planting space so that um, uh, you're, you know, the uh, elevation that we showed you uh, just shows the uh, uh, the building, but there is space there to get plantings and stuff that would, would soften it as well. Um, but again, it will match. The foundation right now is brick that's been stuccoed, um, and the plan for the ramp would be to have that be concrete that's stuccoed and painted white to match uh, the foundation on the rest of the building. Uh, the railing system is, you know, uh, there's more to it than, than the, the simplest railing that we could use, but um, that basically matches the railings uh, that are on the front and back porch. Um, so where they do show, they should look consistent with railings that are on the building uh, right now. Cool. Look at that again. Okay. Yeah, the street view, uh, it looks tight, but, but the, uh, the plan looks like you got plenty of room. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Back on at this area here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do. We'll see what that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, originally the architect had it tucked in here. 
but um, its entrance into the building made no sense because this is actually a good functional room. This actually functions as more of a coat room and an entrance, sort of a, an, an ante room to the entrance. Mm -hmm. So uh, bringing people up here, it sort of matches the activity of entering the building and entering activities here. So that's, that's why it's, uh, the ramp is showing here. Gotcha. Well, it's always tough on a little building to put in a ramp and make it look like it's kind of always been there or belongs there. So, you know, yeah, I, you know, it, it's just the, I mean, it's appropriate. The, you know, the accessibility guidelines are, you know, they're good. We try to meet them whenever we can, but um, within reason. And it's just, it's, it, we've just had to, with this event, with this home, um, it's just a it's just a reality that we're going to be dealing with this more and more. So, from the sketch, it looks like it's tastefully integrated into the look of the building. Yes, I think uh, yeah, the, the, this right here I think is a really good opportunity. To just kind of just yeah, and I think as Jeff mentioned, if we uh, are also able to lay the plantings in here that we have the room to do. Uh, that's going to soften it, soften it even more. Yeah. But I think, it, as you mentioned, Beverly, I think it, it's it, that was Beverly, right? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Even front, I think. Yeah. I think she's. Yeah. Beverly, you still there? Fading out a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Give me a second. Yeah. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything more, right? right. So three of them are interior, roughly. Yeah. And these would be two exterior, basically. This one is uh, head, of, head of the school and Memorial Hall. Okay. And, yeah, and the, and the windows on um, one other building? Or is it two? Windows in uh, the only other place to be the windows would be uh, are not only is, is in the chapel. And uh, those uh, those are, um, again, identical replacements to uh, the windows that are already there. Again, just new materials, cool. upgraded technology in the windows. And again, we just have to be able to open them safely. And right now those are becoming dangerous as well. We, you know, on, for, we have an event, we have to put sticks in the window to make sure that they stay open if we have them open. And uh, that's just getting a bit unnerving given the size of those windows. Yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't want to see anything like that. Uh, okay. Beverly, you were um, saying something, but your internet connection got garbled. Do you want to try that again? Are you still not there? Yeah, I don't know what to, what happened. Uh, so this this just recently. Are you, are you back with us? Oh, sorry, hasn't moved yet. So. <laughs> okay. There, Beverly, you're there now, right? You're oh, muted. Ryan, you're muted right now. Okay, unmuted. We did not. We did not catch what you said. So if you want to try that again, now that your internet seems better. Uh, I I talked to him about the taste design around it. Did well into look at the building since it's so difficult to build these additions um, so that architecturally they look like just tacked on. Mm -hmm. oh. They work well with the look of the building, the period of the building. Okay. I didn't catch that. Did anyone else? I think what Beverly was saying is that um, it's it, for buildings of this age, it's it's hard to uh, 
hard to incorporate in uh, a, a structure or a feature like a, a ramp right now in in these older buildings, but it, I think she was indicating that she thought that we did a reasonably good job at blending it into the uh, the structure. So it looks uh, like it, it it says it belongs there as much as a ramp can be on a building that was built in 1910. <laughs> and yes, and she said it was tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> The, the view of the, the side of the building, the north side, the, the windows are already there like that? Because yep. they, look, they look smaller on the picture for some reason. Maybe that was just my. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, uh -huh. you have just the angle. Size, my, size wise, these are. Uh... Yeah. This is the, these are the dimensions right now, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I've measured every one of them. Uh, there's a lot of detail on this building. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think just looking at the, the street view picture, they look smaller just because of the angle. And, and yeah. So, you know. And I think also the black shutters, uh, uh, which I didn't show there, uh, uh, which um, are actually not uh not kind of realistic shutters but they're uh uh they are there but the the shutters i think make the windows look smaller well i, I you know i think maybe because i'm looking at the, the one in the front and then looking at the side and kind of want them to be the same size just in my mind <laughs> yeah well and and actually when you do the drawing and put in all the detail of the trim it, it you see all those extra lines, and that makes it look, you know, in reality, with that all painted white, it, it just kind of fades in together. Yeah, 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 they look, you know, they look bigger than what they look like in the picture, I guess. That's right. Well, I can assure you that I, I did not want to pay for any extra carpentry, so we're going <laughs> in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I, I guess what I was going to say before was this has just gone to mass historic, right? Um, yes, I, I, my understanding is that um, we wanted to make sure that we reviewed everything with you folks. Mm -hmm. And then if uh, you concur with our actions and our, uh, our activities, um, I think the uh, mass historic would need to, a letter from you folks to, you know, it can either be sent to us and we forward it to them or it can be sent to them directly. I'm not sure what the protocol is, but uh, then uh, they then they have that acknowledgement that the uh, local historical commission has been, uh, we've reviewed this with uh, you folks and you don't have any uh, particular concerns. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, if we, if we go that route, I'll probably just send it off to you and you can forward it to them. It's okay. typically what we do. Great. So, anybody else have any questions? Nora? No, I think um, I think my only question, I think it was quite thorough. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, Jeff. Um, I think Jeff answered as far as the, the, the softening up of things in terms of uh, plantings that would happen as, uh, with Memorial Hall and that um, change in the in the in the bridge but it but no you it was a very uh thorough and informative walkthrough of the changes and and certainly there's a lot of integrity to make things look in keeping with what is there so i don't have any questions okay. thanks as you as usual they have done an excellent job yeah cool. thank you yeah, a lot of pictures, drawings, it's awesome. Uh, I wish everybody was that thorough. Uh, all right, well, I mean, if, if nobody has any questions or concerns about it, uh, I, I guess we could uh, take a motion to uh, give our approval to this and write a letter of support. Well, I'd be happy to make a motion uh, giving the Historical Commission's approval and support of moving forward with these important uh, safety and equitable uh, access uh, for all uh, improvements to these two, two buildings and the other necessary 
work that needs to be done with the other buildings that would all explain to us by by you chuck and jeff i second okay uh in favor nora aye beverly aye and mike yes uh okay so i will uh get the letter together for you and uh I'll just, i guess i'll email it to uh to you chuck great all right. right yep that sounds fine if you want to email it to either jeff or me that'd okay. be fine right. yep. so I think I have everybody's emails anyways. Uh, thank you so much for all the information and the uh, presentation. Uh, and, you know, good luck with everything. Yeah, so it's going to be a busy summer and a busy next busy winter and a next busy summer. So, uh, Frankly, I'm more excited about the boiler rooms that you guys are <laughs> doing there. <laughs> well, you and me both when so uh, once we can uh, know that the, those are running the way we want them to run so yeah yeah well All right. thank thank you both for thank, yeah, sharing thank that with us thank you very much thank you very much thank sharing. you all for working with us thank you. well really. your, awesome. your usual diligence it's a pleasure Oh, well, and it's uh, it's uh, back uh, back to the committee the same uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you folks thank you Thanks. Take care, please. All right. Bye now. Goodbye. We lost the other person. Bye mm -hmm. <laughs> bye. Where are you going? <laughs> that delay? I'm, con I'm confused now. Okay. Uh, let me take some notes here. Uh, I'm going to skip over the demo delay right now. Do we have any updates on the survey and planning grant? Um, so we met with the consultants after the last uh, historical commission meeting. We went through the phase two deliverables um, with the consultants and the representatives from Mass Historic. Um, and they were uh, approved to keep going with their research and uh, documentation for the 100 properties that they had, uh, the, you know, the, that we had, that they had narrowed down from our original list. Um, so they're going to be spending basically the rest of the summer uh, researching the structures and the cemetery and writing the um, the inventory forms um, for each of those buildings. Um, so at this point, um, as far as I'm concerned, that we're in a holding pattern, um, waiting for them to let us know that they're um, that they've got the next set of um, submittals for us to review. Um, at that point, I think um, we're going to have 100 forms to look through to kind of make sure that they're, um, you know, meeting that the, that the history that they're presenting is, is seems accurate enough to, to the commission um, that we think that they've done a good job on the, you know, the properties and we don't need them to go back and do anything more. Um, but I, that's not going to happen um, till maybe um, beginning of August or middle of August. Um, so when that when they when they do submit their um, next set of deliverables, uh, again, I'll, I'll send them along to the commission. And when you ha if you have any comments or um, concerns about it, then we can discuss it and again the commission will be invited to the to the phase meeting um, with mass historic and the consultant um, i did send out that invite to everyone for the second meeting um, but i wasn't um, other than mike and myself there were or other than mike there were no other representatives of the historic commission that came to that meeting yeah it was, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, it's the first time I've really been involved with anything like this. And, uh, 
I mean, I think they're, they're moving along pretty well and uh, pretty informative. They seem, you know, and obviously it's not 100% perfect in uh, mass historical values, but uh, I mean, they're, you know, they, they point it out and, you know, they, they're very willing to fix the any kind of issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, I guess one of the interesting things was when she was doing something with Pine the Grave, I kind of missed the, the beginning of that. And, uh, so that, say that again? With a Pine the Grave. Oh, you're, 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 you're fading in and out, Mike. Not me, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're, uh, you've been kind of choppy all night, if you can hear me. I can hear you most of the time, but some of the words get chopped off. Yeah, you're, but we're about, about the same with you. Uh, <laughs> not saying that is, you know, but, sorry. I don't know, it must be that long distance coming from East Street to the uh, internet connection. Excuse me, I don't live on East Street. <laughs> well, it's got to come all the way up East Street, not you know, <laughs> the top of the mountain being broadcast to it. It could, could be the power outage again last night at three in the morning. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, anyway, she, yeah, she's talking about the find the grave, and Peter kind of pointed out that you know, well, it's, or Michael pointed out that it's not really you know a very good resource. However. And then Peter kind of jumped in and was like, well, I use it all the time. <laughs> it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of interesting that just the uh, old dynamics and whatnot. So it was, it was kind of fun. I think what they were getting at was that by itself, it's not sufficient, mm -hmm. but it's a great it's a great jumping off point to get information about the uh, the gravestones and, and the burial plots. Um, yeah, they, I, I think their, their issue was more like accuracy. There's, there's a lot of mistakes, I guess. They, um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, I get it, and like I said, it should be interesting moving forward too. Uh, and you think we'll be able to meet in person one of these days before this is over? I hope so. Um, the although I I would imagine that bringing Mass Historic out from Boston and our consultants up from New York, and yeah. um, that the phase meetings will continue to be on Zoom. Um, but I think the Historical Commission might um, have a... Um, yeah, that was my, kind of my first uh, concern, not, not so much with the grant. But... Yeah. yeah. Um, but we can, I mean, at, at least for the time being, we're still going to be remote. Um, yeah. we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Um, well, everything's kind of opening up July 1st, right? But with, with, uh, we still have yeah. to, we still have I to mean, provide access for people remotely anyways. It's complicated. The open meeting law is, is um, it's complicated, um, yeah, yeah, it's to, to, say, to, to say the least. And there have been proposals in the legislature to amend or to, to actually permanently change the open meeting law to allow remote meetings. Um, right now, the way that the open meeting law works is that we can have, um, like, there has to be a, a quorum of the members in, in, in the, the same in the same space yeah. in order to allow one or more members be uh virtual um but then we get into issues with um public access and public accessibility um and equity with running hybrid meetings um so if people are physically present and then other people other constituents are um on zoom or some other platform viewing the meeting how is that how, how are people able to actually participate or not? And these things, city council is trying to work this out um, locally and then at the state level, there's some proposals to the state legislature that would possibly make it easier for municipalities to do a hybrid thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's gonna be hard to, once we, once we go back to full in-person, 
um, it's going to be hard to um, uh, to continue to allow to to do a hybrid situation where we have some people present, some in in, in virtual, um, and and it seems like from the public's perspective, the having these meetings on Zoom has been um, very good, and that people don't really want to see it going back to having to actually physically be present in order to, like, let's say, right, yeah. watch a city council meeting or planning have, board meeting. Have um, you noticed an uptick in like participation in some meetings? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, the the public hearings that we have. Um, for the planning board, or the zoning board, city council have uh, been much more well attended. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, you know, the historical commission has not seen that same amount of interest from other folks. So um, it may not be an issue with the historical commission. Right. Well. Um, but I, I mean, when we've had demo delay hearings, it has been helpful to, um, I think there was the, there was a woman who was not in East Hampton at the time when we were doing the two pace and lane uh, demolition, and um, she was able to take part in the meeting and give her support. Um, so. Yeah, I, you know, it seems to be working. I know it's not the ideal because it's, yeah. it's always nice to you know pass around a piece of paper or you know look at a map or whatever and kind of you know be able to point with this. I know that I was watching and, and uh, Chuck was putting the pictures and whatnot up there and he was kind of a little bit ahead of what he was pointing at he'd point at something and you know he would be talking about already and finally then if i'm looking for the point to where is it <laughs> yeah. that's, you know okay so uh and about the, the canal where do we stand on that okay so, coming up yeah so um next thursday the CPA is meeting, and I'm submitting a request to the CPA uh, for fifteen thousand dollars to fund to, to support the East Hampton portion of this survey on the Hampton Hampshire Canal. Yep. Um, so the the CPA meeting is at six fifteen uh, okay. p.m. Um, Thursday? Next Thursday, uh, the seventeenth, um, and. Um, Basically, uh, the the five towns that have the canal run through it um, are each submitting. Uh, sorry, the six towns are each submitting fifteen thousand mm dollars -hmm. for, um, for a total of ninety thousand um, dollars. The request would uh, um, fund Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to oversee the consultant and continue to provide staff to run the. Um, the, for lack of a better term, the committee, the, the canal committee um, to keep meeting and um, it would have been you know, the remainder of the work, but $78,000 or so would be available uh, for a consultant to actually go and do the uh, survey of the canal um, in the historical, um, you know, the putting to basically putting together the National Register nomination uh, for the, cana the, the canal in Massachusetts. Um, and that would be done by RFQ, uh, similarly to how we put together the, um, the historic, uh, the Main Street Historic Inventory Project. So um, we may not spend all of the money that's uh, appropriated for the project, um, depending on what the consultants think their, their cost would actually be to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, um, the committee, the, the canal committee is sort of going to their respective towns to, for CPA funding or other funding. Um, and like I said, I'll be taking this to our local CPA next Thursday. So if um, there can be, I don't know if people are availability to come to that meeting um, or if the commission wants to um, submit a letter of support um, for the project um, or how we want to communicate the support um, 
I, so, I believe last meeting we voted to approve a letter of support. Okay. So if you, if you need it, I can certainly do that. Um, that'd be great. Um, um, yeah, but if, if there was a way to get that. Um, but I, I, it's a late ask um, because the application is, um, the, the meeting is next week. So. Cool. Um, I am un, unable to attend that meeting next Thursday. I'm sorry. So, so the the letter is more important in my eyes. Yeah. I don't know about you, Beverly, or John, or you're, you're muted, Beverly. John, John's not here today, right? No. Well, well, Tracy did actually. Uh, Tell me you couldn't make it. Let's see if we're going to put the signal glasses on so she can see that she's muted. There we go. <laughs> it, it's been unmuted. I don't know why it keeps muting. So it, it, you keep um, temporarily leaving the meeting, and when you well, come back, that, no. and, and when you come back into the meeting, it starts you muted. Yeah, all of a sudden the screen gets black, which I don't understand. It's not me leaving the meeting. It's the, the meeting leaving me. <laughs> yeah. But every time it just keeps coming back with you being muted. So oh. um, you, I were, keep, you were saying. I keep, I keep, I keep, I keep checking it and it, it keeps saying that I'm not on mute, but I don't know. Okay. Can't tell you. Uh, so are you able to come to the CK meeting next week or? I have to check with my calendar to see what's going on. Okay. Right right now, there's a lot of issues. Uh, Walter had a bad accident last week and um, he's, he's here right now. He had a big injury to his leg. So it depends what's happening with that. Understandable if, if you can't make it. Um, and my best to Walter. If you can, uh, yeah, can get sorry. The if, if you could send it to, well, send it to everybody. Just in case. Yeah, I'll, I, I will send, I'll send out a copy of the application and the Zoom information for the meeting because there might be, may, maybe Tracy or John, who's not present now, would be able to make it. Um, Mike, did you say you'd be able to attend the CPA meeting or? I should be able to. Okay. Um, obviously, can't guarantee anything, but it should be able to. Okay. Um, would the commission like to vote a letter of support um, for the project? Then, if we're if we're not sure if we're going to actually have. Uh, like I said, I think we we did that last time. We, yeah. Okay. We, like, uh, I think we're all set with that. Yeah. The minutes. Uh, the, the, the minutes from. <laughs> the minutes from last time. Last time, just said a letter of support may be necessary. Oh, okay. No, so we, so we, I we, didn't we, know we, if that meant that. I couldn't remember if we had voted on that or not. Yeah, so. but, you know, I didn't write it down. That way I just said letter of support. So uh, if you want, yeah, we, why don't we do that? So we got a motion for a letter of support for the CPA. I make a motion for a letter of support CPA funding for the Northampton New Haven Canal grant. Second. Oh, uh oh. Beverly, are you with us? I said I second. Okay, very good. <laughs> can, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you I'm now. I'm still, I'm not on mute. Uh, I don't know what's happening. And uh, we'll call vote, Beverly. Aye. Aye, and Nora. Aye. Michael, aye. Okay, we've got letter of support coming. Thank you. Welcome. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm actually pretty psyched about this project. It should be it should be interesting if they uh, be able to get it going. Uh, yeah. It's a long time in the making, actually. You know, I mean, the last committee was about what nine years ago they disbanded. One somewhere in that the time frame. You know. So, uh, you know, and it's funny because every now and then uh, 
stuff pops up online and then there's people that like live along there that really get you know jazzed up about it and you know they'll they'll post comments and you know reminisces and and different things so uh it's, uh, it's kind of neat all right um Again, I think we're going to skip over because we're missing two people. We're skipping over the demo delay bylaw review. Uh, we got time, I believe, right? Yeah. Um. So I'm just. I'd like to before we skip over it. Um, yeah. I just like to have a quick conversation about process on it. Um, and I'm wondering if. Um, we don't seem to be making too much progress between meetings or at meetings with it. Right. Um, and maybe it would be helpful to create a small subgroup uh, consisting of two members of the commission and myself, so that way we can meet outside of historical commission meetings to like draft up something and then take it to the commission for approval after we get some progress on it. Sure. Um, sort of creating like a little working group of, of the commission to. Um, you know, just, just make a little bit of progress on it and we can um, give a yeah. draft. Because I think we've talked a lot about it and it seems that everyone's sort of on the same page with trying to understand what it is that we want and we just need to put some right. put some words, words on the paper and... Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, well, we have three, three people here. Any volunteers? Uh, I'll volunteer. I think it's a great idea. I don't know if that's something that does that have to get set up as another public meeting for the three of us to meet or no as long as we don't have a quorum of the commission mm -hmm. then we have uh meetings uh about this okay um, and since i'm not on the commission i don't count yeah, uh, okay um so if nora and i don't know who else um um it can also rotate people in and out depending on availability but i think it'd be i think it would be best to have uh you scared beverly away <laughs> i think that's a great idea and it'd be more efficient to then I, bring I something mind, you know uh, like this this month and early next month i'm kind of you know planned but uh, uh yeah as much as i possibly can i mean i i like I like the ideas of uh, having like some kind of application for us, not just the, the building inspector's demo, you know, application. Uh, right. I'd like to get that in as part of you know part of that at least at least discussion about it. Um, actually, I don't know if I can be able to get this onto. Uh, I was out, uh, you know, looking at his National Register places uh, last week. We did uh, all of the National Register spots in uh, in Adams, and uh, a few in North Adams, uh, and then we did some in uh, Feeding Hills and Agua. However, remember we, we talked about signage. You know, like, yeah, I do remember talking about how small, you know, I mean, what's legally required is fairly small. Um, let's see, can I do this somehow? If I email this to me, I should be able to post it. Um, The, there's a building in, I, I think it was in uh, Beating Hills. Uh, it's preserva preservation of the Smith House. So they had a sign out in front, and they, they have another smaller sign below it uh, saying that the CPA funds were used for it and, and whatnot. I didn't actually get a picture of the house, but. Uh, that's the Agawa Historical Association. And uh, anyway, uh, gosh, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it, it, 
the sign is actually really big, and I, and I actually had my friend stand next to it just so uh, to get some context on how big it was. I, I believe it was almost like a eight by uh, by four. Uh, kind, of, kind of interesting. I'm not sure yeah. if I'll be able to do this in a timely manner. Yeah, well, you could always email it to us as a point of reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. So, Mike, I, I take it you would also be interested in being on the working group? Yeah, I can do that for now. Okay. I mean, if somebody um, else wants to uh, wants to join, I can certainly, you know, well, or we can coordinate it when not everybody's there. So we don't have to have a quorum. It's three to four, right? Three is quorum, and we would need to then have uh, public meeting law, minutes, postings, stuff like that. But if we just have a, if we have two members, um, we can work um, in any manner that works for us, um, meet whenever, and then just come up with a document that then comes back to the commission for approval or modifications or changes or whatever. But at least it, it like, has something to uh, in writing for the commission to look at and, and talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and we're we're doing this for some other ordinance uh, changes as well for. Um, um, so, um, you know, trying to get different members, different committees involved, yeah. without having it fall into, let's say, the planning board or the. Um, Energy Commission or Conservation, so that way we can have a lot of different viewpoints. Um, but in this case, I think just having it as a working group would allow the commission to move forward with it. Um, well, yeah, and, you know, the, the fact of the matter is just you're not really, it's kind of hard to get stuff done in the meeting itself, you know, without going over like two hours. Yeah. So, it, you know, it would certainly be a lot easier just to, uh, okay, this is what we came up with. Let's take a look at it. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to work in a vacuum also. It's yeah. also frustrating working on Zoom on something like this because um, certain people are easy to hear and other people keep fading in and out. Like Mike, I'm hearing about As she fades out. Uh, <laughs> For some reason, half, half of what you're saying is fading in and out. So, uh, yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, yeah, really. That's all, that's because I'm okay. talking. Unless more. you could do it in person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably could. Okay. Right? Yeah, I hope. I mean, especially outside. Yeah, it just. I mean, I think it's regardless of whether or not we do this as um, in person or in Zoom. Um, I think it's just going to be easier to to work on it with a small number of people just to get some movement on it. Um, and if we and if we do go to trying to do working as a full commission on it, um, I just. We haven't had much luck on that, um, and we were working on it uh, before COVID. So I, I think that there's maybe maybe time to try something new for let's this maybe the summer and then see how far we get. I think that's a great idea. So let's do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, Nora and Mike, um, are you if we were to meet to move this along with nights um during the day what works best for you to have meetings oh late afternoon is good i mean sometimes you know i'm off the last few days of june so uh i, I will be around uh most most evenings i'm home you know, so not really doing anything yet what about you jamie i feel like you probably live i mean i'm i'm commission because I because I work for the city, you know my my it's easy for me to make time during the day for meetings. It's also easy for me to make time for night meetings um, if I don't already have another night meeting scheduled. Um, 
Here we go. I'm going to so, share this picture now. Um, well, you you probably work too many too many even. Oh, that's a that's a very big sign. And, and guys. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, it, is, it is. I mean, we're riding by it, and but the thing is, from the street, it's not. It doesn't really look that imposing. That's why I had him go. I said, go over and stand that so you know so we can get a reference to how big that looks, you know. But uh, I mean, even this right here is is big enough to actually see from the road. Mm -hmm. So if we if we were to like make that a requirement, you know, we want something at least uh, probably as big as a CPA sign for uh, you know demolition delay or demolition review. Uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. We could never ask anybody to go that big for, I oh, mean, that, that the giant cool. sign, but the, the cool. smaller one, yeah, I could see. Well, it's kind of neat, though. I mean, if, if we were, you know, I mean, obviously it came out of the budget for the uh, preservation, I would imagine. Um, but, it was, you know, I mean, for if a big a big project or an important project, that wouldn't be uh, unappropriate. Okay, let's see. Cool. Well, th thanks. Yeah. Um, and Jamie, I know that you probably work many more nights than you should have to, so I... I don't think it's going to be that many meetings. It's, it's I a, don't either, but... It's a, it's a three-page ordinance right now, mm -hmm. one page of which is already definitions. Like, I think we can mm -hmm. probably within, like, a couple meetings... Um, make some decisions of on language and, and, and get something um, moving. Okay. Uh, I just, I think that, so I'm, I'm flexible, but I'm just trying to get, you know, gauge a, like, Nora, I know you teach, and so you're going on summer vacation, mm -hmm. maybe, unless you're teaching summer school. Um, so. No, I'm not. I, what I would, I would propose, is either uh, late afternoons or evenings because because I would like to do that if we can in person and if I can to have not the responsibility of watching my children which will split my attention tremendously yeah. so okay um, well that's good I mean it's helpful to know you know, late afternoons or early evenings. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can, um, we can, I'll send out an email just for the two of you and we'll pick okay. a time that works, time and date. Okay. Mike, Sounds you said great. you're pretty bit booked up through the rest of June? Uh, yeah, I'm not, like I said, I'm off the last three days, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of June. So. I, I actually have time to use up to, so the days I'm working, I'm going to be busy, but the days I'm not working, I probably won't be. <laughs> what days those are yet, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I still have another well, six days to use. So. Um, if I could so kindly propose that it be after the second week of July, just because there are conflicts here in the household and scheduling that will get confusing. Um, okay. And I, w I would like to be there, so cool. thanks. Great, so um, if we're looking I, at the... I'm gonna leave the meeting because this is, it, it keeps cutting out and it's getting really frustrating. Okay. Because then you come back in and I see one or two people, but it, it's, um, it's driving me crazy. So I will see you at the next meeting. Let me know. So let's schedule the next meeting and make a motion to yeah. end the meeting. Yeah, I think that's a good okay. idea. Okay. So next meeting would be at July 14th. 14th, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. the week there. Great. Okay, great. And, and then, then I if, make. After we adjourn, if Mike and Nora can just stay on for a minute, definitely we'll figure out the scheduling for this first um, work. Or... All right, I make a motion to uh, conclude this this meeting. Second. Uh, I stack. Okay. At seven thirty nine. Very good. Thank you.
Thanks, everybody. Okay. Uh, we're, we're done. Take care, Beverly. Bye, Beverly. Hopefully, it's not happening. Thank you. Take care.